Buenas and half a day, and thank you everyone for being here with us this evening or this late afternoon. The Committee on Education, Self-Determination and Historic Preservation, Infrastructure, Border Safety, Federal and Foreign Affairs and Maritime Transportation will now convene this roundtable hearing. Today is Monday, November 8, 2021, and it is currently 5.07 p.m. For the record and in accordance with the open government law, public notices were sent out via email to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets on Monday, November 1st, 2021, and the second notice on Thursday, November 4th, 2021. Notice of today's hearing was also available on the Guam Legislature's website. I'd like to thank um, everyone for being here today and turning, tuning in via YouTube. Before we proceed with the roundtable, the legislature has general rules of conduct that must be followed and all must abide by these rules of conduct and quality assurance standards. Please keep your video on at all times and ensure you are in a room with little interruptions and adequate lighting specifically to make sure the participant's face is visible at all times. The host of this hearing will mute participants until called upon by the chair. Uh, when you speak, please ensure that you state your name and perhaps position or your role at this roundtable hearing. And then we will follow by any questions, either it be from the members of the community or from senators um, who might be joining us today. I don't see any senators at this time. Um, okay, so this is our hopefully will be the last round of our roundtable hearing since August 26, 2021. Uh, we held several roundtable hearings and we took a recess uh, to have work session meetings with stakeholders concerning bike lanes. And um, we'd like to thank the stakeholders for being very proactive um, in their participation uh, during these work sessions with uh, Department of Public Works. And I also like to especially thank uh, Director Ariola who is the director of uh, Department of Public Works and the Guam Cycling Federation, Mr. Eric Taidinko, who is the president um, for facilitating these meetings and ensuring that uh, we were able to get uh, feedback from the bicycling community and all, all members actually. And so without any further ado, I'd like to invite Director Ariola. I believe there's a presentation that we have um, which is a result for these work sessions that were conducted during this time from August until now. And so I'd like to um, invite him to present the plan moving forward and the agreement or commitment that Department of Public Works have, has made um, with um, our stakeholders. Director Ariola. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Um, and, and yes, it's uh, since the last roundtable hearing we had in, in August, we had, I believe, three work sessions, and and uh, you know, for the record, it's it's been a it's a it's a it's a joy and a pleasure to work with the Guam Cycling Federation. Eric, uh, you and you, you and your members are 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 just wonderful to work with. Uh, very accommodating. They they understand what uh, the the re restrictions and some of the resources that we have, uh, and and you know, we're all in this together. And the good part about it is that uh, we 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 see a common good. So. Hopefully this, this thing comes to fruition and uh, we'll, we'll stay on top of it. We can, we'll certainly commit to that. So yeah, let, let me go ahead and, and go ahead and start. And um, basically we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk about the DPW, the bicycle accommodation improvements. Uh, I think we have like 12 or, or 14 slides. It's not too long, but uh, I'll go through them as, as slowly and uh, as, as distinctly as I can. And I apologize also our chief engineer, uh, Lyndon Kobayashi, uh, was unable to make it on the Zoom today as he's got some um, uh, car problems and uh, he apologizes. Um, so yeah, let me get let me get started. Uh, the the next slide. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about the approach and assumptions, uh, the bike routes. We uh, we kind of broke it up into three three loops here on, on the island, northern, central, and southern, and then we uh, will discuss some some options that. Uh, that uh, we're, we're bringing to the table and then we'll rank them when, which, which we believe uh, uh, which route we wanna start with. And then uh, we'll, of course, we'll talk about next steps and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but be, before I move on, you know, especially when it comes to the uh, approach and, and assumptions, as I stated in, in previous hearings, the first one here, 
uh, in, in my mind, and I, I certainly agreed with, uh, with the Cycling Federation, is, is for, is for uh, bicycle rider safety and also driver safety. Uh, that's going to be paramount in any, anything and everything we do. Um, we're also going to be talking about uh, we 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 talked about the different types of riders. There's your, you know, your 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 hardcore riders like Eric. Uh, these guys ride like 400 miles a week, and that's just crazy. <laughs> you know, I I ride I ride a bike to Tomorrow Village, and I'm done one way. <laughs> uh, but but uh, you know, there's there's different types of riders that that we're going to uh, take care of. Uh, part of it also is this healthy lifestyle that every, everyone seems to be getting into, which is good, and we want them to get into it. Um, uh, the, also, the, we want to uh, address the fact that there are very few true, if you will, bike lanes uh, throughout the island, and hopefully our, our task moving forward addresses that. Uh, and then, of course, there's the, uh, the, the public laws that are, that are uh, on the books uh, today, uh, 16 GCA, Chapters 3, and then Chapter 27. Both talk about uh, bicycle lanes, bicycle riding, bicycle safety, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be our, our guide uh, um, moving forward. Um, okay, so if I can have the next slide, please. Uh, in terms of our approach and our priorities, uh, we, uh, we wanted to focus on the, the most used bike routes. And, and in talking with Eric and uh, and his uh, his teammates and his members of the of the federation, you know, there are basically three routes that that seem to be um, uh, the most used. Some of them take the three and then just make it into one as well, depending on how hardcore they are. But the ones we looked at was, uh, and I'll show you on the map. It's a it, there's a northern, there's a there's a central, and then there's a southern route that that we'll be talking about, uh, taking into account road condition, uh, shoulder condition. Um, uh, lighting and, and things of that nature uh, uh, with, uh, with regard to moving forward uh, for bicycle lanes. Um, we wanted to also address this as a single project per bike, bike route. In other words, we'll do one first and then do the other and then do the other based on funding and, and, and uh, easiest to do. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll, we'll do it uh, based on, based on uh, whatever appropriated funds we have. Um, and we, we think we can start with, uh, I believe uh, we're, we're looking at starting on the central route and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that as, as, as we go on. Let, let's talk now about uh, some of the assumptions that we're making uh, in discussions uh, with our, our friends over at the, uh, the Cycling Federation. Next slide, please. Um, okay, so these are some of the assumptions we're making logistically, all right? Uh, existing shoulders to be used as bike lanes. If there's an existing shoulder, uh, you know, we'll, we, we would use that. And when we say existing shoulder, we're, we're talking existing paved shoulder. Uh, there, there may be some shoulders that are out there that need uh, some clearing, uh, minor, minor uh, scraping, if you will, but the pavement is still in, 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 in good shape. Um, uh, uh, existing shoulders that, that are in good shape uh, might need just a little bit of maintenance uh, and maybe a little bit of uh, rehab, but there's, there's quite a few routes that are out there that have a, a decent sized shoulder uh, that's, that, again, is safe for, for bicyclists. Um, again, we're, we're, we're looking uh, for recreational purposes. I think if we were going to do something more competitive, uh, that's probably a next step that we're going to look at. Um, uh, when it comes to intersections, are the intersections that we have today, uh, based on the major routes, uh, are, are as, as large and as good as, as we're going to get? Uh, so the, the assumptions take into account that no intersections will be widened because they're as large as they can get. Um, in the urban areas uh, where where only striping is planned, you know, we'll we'll take care of that. We just we just talked about that. There's some previous lane, lanes that have been striped, and and we'll we'll, we'll get on those as well. Um, we don't believe any widening is going to be required uh, unless there is, in fact, no shoulder or, or there, the shoulder just is, isn't, uh, there isn't enough space or, uh, you know, uh, basically it's going to be a case-by-case a, a, a -case basis uh, where, where uh, we, uh, if we decide to uh, uh, shoulder is needed and, and pavement is needed, then, then we'll go, on, go ahead and do that. But uh, I, I think we found some routes where there's, there's decent sized shoulders 
a lot of uh, clearing and, and scraping is, 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 is needed. Um, of course, each project, uh, we'd like to do a design for each project so that it, it gets done right and it's done thoroughly. And when we do open up, say, the, 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 first, uh, the first route uh, as a designated uh, bicycle uh, with this designated bicycle paths, you know, the public is aware of it. They know what to look for. Uh, everything is clean and clear. The signs are up. Uh, it'll be designed for signs, for striping, for marking. And, and uh, there'll be no, uh, there's no question as to where the bicycle lanes are. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this this basically will will show you what what we're we're gonna do if uh, if we do have a when when we do plan to have a bicycle lane within a within a uh, certain route with in a roadway. You'll see the top the top diagram. It just shows the existing conditions, the two lanes, perhaps a a, a sidewalk there, or that that could also just be uh, the shoulder of the road. And so what we would do there is we would we would designate the the bicycle lane. Uh, and as you, you mentioned earlier, Senator, it would be striped and it would have the shadows uh, also to, to show people that this is a bicycle lane. Uh, and we would have road signs that basically say share the road with a, a bicycle thing. On top of that, uh, a, 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 a um, huge uh, um, public relations campaign. We've talked about that with Eric, uh, a lot of advertising, a lot of education, a lot of uh, 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 public uh, information, you know, getting on the talk shows and things like that to let drivers know that that this is this is coming down. Uh, and and again, uh, you know, this is it's uh, it's in law that when a bicyclist is is on the on the road or is using a certain lane, uh, the the outermost lane, uh, as they're required to, uh, they have they have every right to be on that on that road and every right to be on that lane. And drivers are required. To, to move to the left of them and, and overpass them uh, on, on the left side. So that's what we're kind of looking at here on, in terms of the pro, uh, in proposed improvements. If, it, if in fact there is a shoulder, then, then you'll, you'll see the bike lane on the shoulder and that'll be designated with, uh, with striping. Uh, the next slide shows uh, the, the actual shoulder and that's what I was talking about. Some of the shoulders are there. Uh, you'll see them on route 10, on route 16, a few on route eight where some of the grass has just overgrown that. And that's, that's just gonna require uh, a si simple grading uh, and, and regular maintenance to, to make sure that it's, it's smooth enough. enough. Because uh, as, as we did discuss the, again with the, the Cycling Federation, uh, you know, the, the, the surface that the bicycles need are gonna be much different than the, the everyday vehicles that use the road, right? So we, we need to make sure that uh, the surface is as, as smooth as possible. Uh, without any 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 bumps, any ruts, uh, any 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 degradation uh, of the road uh, due to their their tire size and their their tire makeup. So that's that's kind of like what what we're looking at in terms of of shoulders, where we'll clear the if there's any um, green uh, uh, weeds or grass growing, that'll be graded and and smoothed out. Also, if there's any manholes, sometimes there's a manhole cover. We're, we'll 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 work to get that uh, as as flush as possible. Uh, to the road so that in, in the end when the bicyclists are riding as you can see in the the diagram the proposed improvement improvements it's as smooth as possible for them um okay next slide please yeah so the, this this basically shows the the three routes the the, the larger uh, diagram in the middle shows the three routes we've got the northern route and that goes from route three uh, all the way up to the, the, the back gate of and the, the, the second gate of Anderson, then to the front gate, and then uh, up to uh, through Marine Drive and then back down to, to Route 3. So that would be the, the first loop there. Uh, the second one is in, is in the yellow, and that's, uh, that's the central loop that goes uh, from uh, Ganya, say Ganya up, up to Route 4, Chalampago. From Chalampago, you'll cut uh, east into, uh, into Route 10. And then from Route 10 at the tri intersection, go back down on Route 8, back down to again. That's that, that's the shortest route uh, that we have uh, showing right now. And actually, that's probably the I'll talk about that. That's probably the easiest route to to get ready for for a full bicycle uh, designation. Then of course you have the the southern loop. That's the that's the one where 
uh, in my opinion, that's the one the pros ride. Uh, um, you know, there, there aren't too many shoulders in that road, but the good part about that, uh, especially when you get to Route 2 uh, from Santa Rita, Agate, Yamatic, Melissa, Inarahan, uh, Talfopa, and Jonia, when you go that route, the traffic isn't as heavy as, say, the central route or, or up north. So, um, uh, and, but I see them every Saturday and, and Sunday. The, 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 the hardcore riders take that route. They actually take it from uh, from the north all the way down south and then all the way back up. And I think that's a good, uh, it's like 27 miles or something like that. But it's a, it's, it's a, it's a nice ride. Uh, next, uh, next route, next slide. Okay, specifically, specifically in the northern loop, uh, we have that pegged at about 14 uh, miles in length. Uh, it'll include widening Route 9 to add uh, some paved shoulders. Route 9 is that, uh, it's probably a mile, it's less than two miles. It's that, I, I like to call it the forgotten strip that we didn't pave back when we did Route 3. Uh, and that, that, that extends from the end of Route 3 to, uh, to Anderson. Um, and there's reasons for that. I think I mentioned that in, in previous uh, hearings that the uh, good portion of the roadway, present roadway, is, uh, there's, is, is on private property. So we need to, uh, we need to uh, uh, adjust that and, and, and resolve that uh, private property issue on the easements. Um, uh, some of the work that's going to uh, need to be done is, uh, you know, we're going to need to clean and clear some of the shoulders, both on the route once run route one side as well as well as route uh, route three and route nine as I just mentioned uh, will restripe some of the edges uh, add shower showers uh, that show the uh, that it is in fact a bicycle lane if not a bicycle shoulder uh, signage of course uh, throughout the, the roadways on in both directions uh, and, and yes let me be clear our intent is to, to make the bike lanes in both directions uh, correct Eric just give me a thumbs up Okay, all right. Just wanted to make sure that it, it, the bike lanes would be in both directions throughout the routes. Uh, and then uh, if shoulder paving is needed, uh, we'll get that done as well. But uh, th that's, a, that's a long route. Um, the thing with that is, is, especially on Route 3, that's a highly traveled area and, and high, uh, with high, uh, high speed area. So again, um, you know, we're going to, um, we're going to do as much as possible when we announce that these are our full-fledged uh, bicycle routes to do as much as we can in terms of driver, uh, vehicle driver uh, information and and safety and and uh, and practices for uh, for going around bicyclists. Uh, okay, let's talk about the central loop, which is uh, the next slide. Okay, this is the one I like. I said it basically uh, goes from say uh, the Agania loop up uh, Route 4, uh, and then turning uh, east onto Route uh, Route 10. And then from, at the Triana section, you go back on Route 8 and go back to Agana. So that, that's the shortest route, I think, that we have here. That's, uh, that's pegged at 12 miles. Uh, we'll be cleaning and clearing shoulders on, on throughout the whole route. Uh, same thing again, striping uh, and shower, adding shower, shadows and, uh, of course, signage throughout the, throughout the route. Um, there's going to be some areas uh, where shoulder uh, paving is, is going to be needed. Uh, and again, if there are any um, manholes there from perhaps Guam Waterworks, or there's a manhole cover from, uh, from uh, GPA, or again, like I said, Guam Waterworks, or, or any of the, uh, the other utilities, uh, we'll have to take care of that as well. But I think uh, minimum, uh, I, I don't know, we haven't really uh, uh, discussed that whether we, uh, just depending on, on how wide the shoulders are, but I think at a very minimum, we're looking at four, if not five feet minimum shoulder uh, that, that we've discussed. Six feet, I think, would be, a, would be, a, would be a, a really advantageous for everybody. We already have existing shoulders that are eight, some are even 10 feet, so that, that, that works as well. And then uh, our southern loop, that's, that's, the, that's the, the southern loop. Uh, that goes through uh, the southern villages of uh, Santa Rita, Agate, Yamadak, Meleso, Inalahan, and, and Telefofo, and, and Jotnia. So, um, and then it'll, it'll come back up uh, along Route 4 back to, uh, back to Agana. Um, again, the good part about that is the, the traffic's not as, uh, as, uh, as high as, as, say, in the central and in the northern areas. Uh, but, uh, 
you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look to, uh, that, that's going to take a lot of design and, and planning because that's the longest route. Uh, we are, as, as we speak, uh, we are doing traffic counts. Uh, I think we've got three traffic counters going on along Marine Drive right now. Uh, one up north by the mall. Uh, there should be one uh, in East Agania. And I think uh, there should be one in Tabuni, uh, somewhere in Tabuni. I didn't see that one up yet, but I know that I know they're they're up and they'll be up for two weeks, if not three weeks, to take into account what the traffic's like, especially in the uh, uh, on the weekends. If we're looking at at uh, opening bike lanes, specific uh, bike lanes uh, during the morning hours and the weekend. So based on 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 the on the three loops, Senator and 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 guests that we have uh, uh, here, we put together uh, uh, options, a comparison of options that that we have that we can do. Uh, um, for all three, uh, next slide, please. And again, this these are these are draft numbers. They're 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 very uh, um, <clears throat> they're very draft. Uh, and and these came from our our, our engineering side. Uh, so if you if you look at them, uh, you you know you you've got the list there of criteria where we're looking at at costs, uh, the schedule, also how long it's going to take, and then of course uh, the the user preferences and and all these were. Uh, presented to the uh, the cycling federation, uh, and uh, we've uh, we've vetted them out. Uh, and you know, it's not to say that it's written in stone. That's why it's still in draft. Uh, we invited uh, Eric and and his uh, his fellow members to spread this out and and bring it to to the other cycling uh, federation members and and uh, you know give us their thoughts on on, on what uh, what they think about it. And so you know, we have the criteria. We have the three. Uh, 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 loops, if you will, uh, we pegged some numbers on, on what it's going to take uh, for for construction uh, and, and and design, uh, and then the the amount of time it's going to take for for both design and construction. Uh, and again, these are just very very preliminary numbers. Uh, uh, um, I think uh, you know, they'll be able to narrow down as soon as you do actual field work. That that'll tell you exactly what you're what you're dealing with and and the type of scope of work that we're we're looking at. So. Uh, hopefully, this this the the comparison of options. It's a it's it's a good start for us because it tells us uh, kind of like where where we want to start and uh, and uh, you know just looking at if if you look at at something that that can be done fairly soon uh, with a, a lower cost, so on and so forth. You know, send the central route is is what we're looking at, uh, and and uh, I'll go through that a little bit further. Uh, next slide, please. And so what we did is we ranked the we ranked the option and, and as I mentioned, as I just mentioned, uh, the central route uh, seems to be uh, the one where where we want to do first uh, because it, it ranks uh, the highest in terms of uh, you know uh, cost, schedule, safety, uh, things of that nature. Say some it's a it's a route that we can get to quickest and and actually designate the soonest as a uh, a bona fide um, uh, bicycle route. Uh, let's see. So ne next steps, moving forward now. Um, you know, we we want to move along with uh, with uh, uh, getting some uh, design services. Uh, <clears throat> uh, if if uh, de depending on those design services, et cetera, uh, I think it's it's real important that that we have the designs uh, available uh, in the shelf re ready to go because. You know, at, at any given time, depending on, on what funding we have available, we, we can pull them off the shelf and and, and get the construction going, uh, because you want to do this right. Uh, I, I I in terms of uh, I know you had mentioned about striping things uh, uh, now with uh, with uh, on on the on the previous uh, bike lanes. I think that's that's fine and, and and good because that's already been designated. Uh, drivers are already aware of that, and so we can go ahead with that. But uh, I would uh, really recommend that, that we do a, a, a good final design for this. Uh, you know, we, we will prepare the scope uh, for the design as well as, uh, as for the uh, construction. But, uh, you know, we want to do it right. And uh, because, I, again, safety is, is paramount here. Uh, we we want to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, when, when you do a, a bicycle lane, no different than any, any type of highway, uh, you're, we're trying to communicate direction and, and uh, not just direction, but safety features. And we're also trying to communicate how, how and where uh, people and drivers should act, both the bicyclists and, and the drivers. So, 
uh, if we if we do it right and and we do the signs right and we do the the shadows right, we do the 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 road striping the right way. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it'll 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 lessen the risk of of any future accidents, which of course you know we certainly don't want. So that's that that's uh, that's always been at the forefront of of putting this uh the, these steps together. It's uh it's it's the safety of both the bicyclists and and of course our our, our drivers. Uh, that's that's all I have. Uh, uh, Eric, uh, did I miss anything? Uh, seems to be pretty uh, comprehensive, uh, <laughs> Director Ariola. I do want to just um, Eric, can you just go in and state your name, your full name, for the record? Hmm. We, we lost you, you, we can't hear your uh, mic. Are you guys able to hear me now? Very, very, um, the volume is very low. Hang on, let me just put my repeat on. Okay. While we're waiting for Eric, for the record, my name is Vince Ariola. I'm the director at DPW. Thank you. Okay, how is this? Is that better? Not quite. Not quite. Okay. Uh, let me look at, hang on. I am so sorry. I had this all worked out. Uh, Try logging on again. Okay, while we wait for Eric to um, come back online with the um, his mic check, uh, can we just bring up the last slide, which was the breakdown of the costs? Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, the very last slide. The $2 million is, is what I'm, um, Director Ariola, for the $2 million um, procurement of design services, uh, you know, there has, uh, from my understanding, there's an, an already an existing um, road plan at DPW, right? And then we do have some engineers at DPW. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering why can why the government is not able to design this in-house. Um, I can I can tell you right now um, we in terms of designing this the, these types of uh, uh, this type of, of projects um, we don't have the the appropriate uh, engineers to do this. This this takes a this basic this basically takes a traffic engineer to do, Senator. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who is experienced in, in traffic flow, traffic speeds, uh, road conditions, and things of that nature. Um, I can, I can, uh, I, 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 I know you're go where you're going with this, uh, you know, and, and we, we can discuss this further. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's been the advice given to me is that, you know, we, we certainly need a, a traffic engineer to, to assist in, in, uh, in developing in helping to, to, to put together the design services the scope for uh, design services. And, okay, yeah, because I you know two million dollars is, is is steep when you you have um, professionals there, right? That that do your traffic monitoring, um, that do you have engineers there as well? So, is it possible that? Um... I, I, Senator, I, I don't. I, it seems I, like I you have a good team. Yeah, what I'm yeah. saying is you have a good team of qualified personnel that is possible to, if you join all those heads together, could perhaps produce a design, um, you know, that, that the government would have. Is, is this not true? That you don't uh, have these types of expertise within DPW? 
No, no, no ma'am. Um, I, I can tell you our, our, our engineers basically re review plans. Most of our, our highway engineers are, are with our, our consultants. Uh, and, and that's, uh, you know, except for our chief engineer, our, who, are, who we are bringing on board, hopefully within the next, uh, within the next week, uh, we have a new chief engineer coming on board. Um, uh, and, and it's really center. It's just, it's a function of the salaries. And, you know, I, I know I've mentioned this in, in, in our budget hearings. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot of this, and, and like I mentioned earlier, this, this kind of work is really specialized. It's, uh, you know, ro even, even road construction is, is highly specialized. So, you know, um, you know, with, with safety in mind, uh, you know, we, we, I, like I mentioned earlier, we, we want to make sure that the d design is, is, is appropriate. It follows, uh, it follows federal guidelines as well, as well as local guidelines. Uh, and it, it, it follows their, there's a uniform uh, traffic uh, um, uh, rules and regs that, that we have to follow as well. So, you know, it's a, uh, uh, you know, I, again, these, the numbers that we have here, they're, they're, they're real, they're real draft. They're really, you, you know, they're not set in stone. So, you know, I, I don't, I certainly don't want to use the entire mil, $2 million appropriation for design, even though, you know, uh, uh, Lyndon and I here kind of pegged the uh, uh, two million for for all of design. But uh, you know, I I think if we start with one project and we see exactly what what, what we're based with, then that'll give us an idea of, of what the others will uh, will entail. Okay, um, can you go to the previous slide where you had your selection criteria? I guess it would your rating scheme. There we go. Okay, so we are looking that the um, the preferred area to start would be the highest weighted, and that would be the central location, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so, um, okay. And that would be $3.4 million was what your estimate would be in, in one of your other slides. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. And then... Um, I'm, I'm guessing that this would be a phased approach. So you would want to start with the higher weighted location and then move towards the lowest, right? So you're going to do right. central and then you're going to do north. Uh, north and then your south. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we also know that we are waiting. Um, the infrastructure bill has, has passed the, the Senate. And so now it's just waiting for the president's signature. And so... Um, if and when the president does sign that bill, uh, what um, what are we anticipating Guam to receive? Uh, Senator, I, I don't have that number, okay. um, I, but I do know from FHWA that uh, all states will receive some some uh, some form of funding for for road infrastructure. Okay, great. And when you and when if and when Guam does receive this funding. Um, is bike lanes going to be a part of any type of road work done um, as far as expanding the roadways uh, or maintaining the roadways? Are you including bike lanes to be a part of your planning? Uh, I, I, moving forward, we do. We already have uh, several uh, major routes whose designs are done and the okay. designs, in, they do include uh, bike paths. Okay. And then uh, I see that uh, right now the the two million dollars that we secured um, within the budget that we just passed specifically yeah. for bike lanes. Um, I would I was wondering if it would be possible that we um, prioritize the lanes and um, uh, that have already been marked. Mm -hmm but it's fading away. And of course there's no signage. And so I was hoping that we can start moving towards that area. So we can start to see something tangible and concrete on our roads, at least within six months or so. Yeah. Senator, I, uh, both uh, not just for bike lanes, but also major route striping. You're, you'll see that at the beginning of next year, um, uh, basically when the dry season starts. Uh, okay. We're real hesitant about starting to paint right now because the, the rains are still here, but but uh, as, as early as January, we'll, we'll, we'll hit the roads uh, striping. Okay, thank you. And then the, it has been, in, in some instances, uh, when the roads are being striped, they're using a lesser grade of paint, which causes 
you know, the need to do it more often, the need to stripe the road more often. So I'm hoping that you will um, also consider to apply the federal regulations um, for paint requirements when we start moving to stripe the roads, even though it may be a little bit more costly. Right. Yeah. So, some of the ones that, that we do in-house, if, if we do it in-house, it's just, we know it's temporary. It's just, just to get us through a certain season, but, but everything that we do, uh, especially on the federal contracts, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's all heat-based uh, paint. Yes. Can we apply that also to our state contracts for, for mm -hmm. our stakeholders, for our island residents? That yes, we use quality product. Right, right. And of course, it lasts longer. Yeah, you know. we've got some new machinery coming in also. So okay. as opposed to pushing it, they're riding on it. All right. Thank you so much, Director. Okay, uh, Mr. Tidinko, how, how's your mic going now? I don't know. How's it Much sound? Better. It? Okay, go. good. Great. Good. Okay. Uh, Eric Tedinko from the Guam Cycling Federation. And uh, thank you, Senator. And thank you, Director Ariola. I do want to clarify, though, with the director that when he mentioned that um, about the shoulders being striped and uh, using that as the existing shoulders for designated as bike lanes uh, with the with the intention of striping it as a way of delineating where the vehicles are and where the bikes are. I, I do need to mention that what was brought up uh, in our work group sessions was that those shoulders need to be level with the road. They, they cannot be a different level because that entails that, um, that should there be an emergency, if a cyclist is in that shoulder and it's a different level and they have to somehow veer off or left towards the main roadway, that differentiation, if there is a difference in the level of that is going to be disastrous for the cyclists if they're, if they're not a skilled bike handler. So that's one thing. I also wanted to mention that, which was not mentioned, and maybe this is something that the director was going to bring up, <clears throat> was that one of the things in our work session that we brought up was the need to change some of the existing cycling laws that are, or, or, or excuse me, the existing laws that are on the books for cycling and the interaction of vehicles with bikes. And I believe your representative at the meetings did take note of that, that one of the things right now, as it exists, the, the what's on the books for laws and, and, and vehicles in relation to cyclists is that uh, all bicycles are yes, treated as a motor vehicle, uh, um, with equal rights as a motor vehicle, uh, but that we are to remain on the very outermost lane at the, as, as far right as possible. Now, that's all great. And I think in theory, it would be, it would be safe in if everything was ideal, but it is not ideal because you'll see cyclists out there that um, if they are uh, legally riding on the right side of the road at the very outermost edge, um, that in a situation where there is traffic and a vehicle comes up beside them and maybe they are in a two lane, uh, um, they're in a, in a roadway that has two lanes going the same direction uh, and there is a vehicle in the inside lane and a vehicle in the outside lane and they approach a cyclist. Oftentimes that vehicle in the outside lane, they're not gonna wanna slow down and then move into the next lane, the left lane to pass the cyclist. They're gonna squeeze by and it's happened to me and it's happened to several people. And so I think that's a really important distinction to make when, when, when talking about how we can modify the existing laws to make it safer for cyclists because you know, it's nice if we can all ride in a big group out there but you know, that's not always gonna be the case. And so we need to consider at the, at the lowest common denominator which is having a single cyclist out there we need to make it safe for them. Uh, and, and so oftentimes when I ride by myself, I will ride just to the right of the middle of that lane because if somebody is gonna hit me, they're gonna have to be really intentional about it. And so I hate to be doing that because now, now I know that I'm really legally not abiding by the laws that are on the books as far as cyclists are concerned. So I would really like it if, if, if you or a, a could sponsor a bill to, to amend that law so that any vehicle approaching a cyclist in that same lane has to move over into the other lane. They cannot try to squeeze by. And I know that, that the follow-up question is all about enforcement, right? And that's another, 
that's another hill to 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 conquer. But I, at least getting it on the books where we at least have legally we can 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 remain in that middle part of the lane and not be uh, you know not be breaking the law in in trying to keep ourselves safe if we're riding uh, solo. Um, and then one thing that was discussed at the very at the very outset of this uh, discussion uh, when you first broached the subject, Senator, was, and, and I believe this is your idea, which I would really like to see happen, was that there was talk about having the outside lanes on Marine Drive from uh, like Micronesia Mall all the way down to Adeloop, the outside lanes on the weekends reserved for cycling between the hours of five in the morning to nine in the morning. And I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, and if that could be implemented, you'll see that uh, the benefits of that would be one, you'll get a lot more safe, um, uh, you, you'll feel a lot more safer as a cyclist out there doing those hours, because that to me is where drivers, even though there's three lanes going in each direction, they seem to be uh, speeding the most in, that, in, those, in those areas, right? Secondly, uh, it encourages more cyclists to be out there because it's gonna create a safer environment. And third, the more cyclists that feel safe in those areas, riding back and forth, uh, is going to cr create more awareness to the general public that, hey, we have a big cycling community here. And so um, I think that's really beneficial for the growth of the sport because we're seeing uh, a lot more people out there. And I don't want to have that be, you know, an impediment to them not to want to be out there and cycling and enjoying the, enjoying the, 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 you know, what island life has to offer. Um, but coupled with that, and I know uh, Director Vince has, has mentioned this before, that in addition to that, once those laws change, if, if, if we can implement that soon, one of the things that we do have to be really proactive about is then informing the public. And that's where the public relations campaign comes in, because it's fine to, to create these laws and make it safe for the cyclists, whether you're riding solo and, and all these things that I'm suggesting. But we need to also, we also need to inform the public in a very in a very um, uh, grand way, you know, whether it's on social media, whether it's in, in advertising in, in, the, in the mainstream media, things like that. It, it just needs to be constant because um, as, uh, as the director said, and, and even some of his DPW staff said in our meetings that the, the very successful program of the of seat belts, you know, could not have been possible without mass communication, constantly reminding people of the benefits and the safety of that. So I do have to say that all these suggestions are great, but it needs to also be uh, very well thought out with a plan to communicate to the public so that you know, they are not unaware. They have to be uh, made aware of these things. And so, um, so anyway, that's my soapbox for, um, and comments for the, for the evening. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Eric. Yes, um, I have this. I have been speaking with my team to uh, address some of those uh, changes in the statute. So we have been uh, researching our current statute and seeing um, in areas how we can improve it to ensure that the um, people are aware that uh, bicycling or bikers, you know, uh, cyclists, are um, are also uh, have the right of way. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, as soon as we are done with our draft, we will we will you know um, perhaps meet with you and 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 stakeholders, and and get your feedback. And then uh, we can then once we get your feedback, we can move forward to uh, introducing that bill. But we are working on it. We are still moving forward also with the timeline of um, from the north to the to the uh, almost southern end. Uh, to see what we can do to secure uh, bike uh, priority over the weekend. Um, and uh, I think that would be uh, uh, a simple, um, well, maybe not so simple for Director Ariola, but, <laughs> but in, my mind's, in my mind's eye, I would think that uh, we could put signage, you know, just like they do in the carpool lanes in the States, you know, prioritize this carpool lane. And, and this is your, if you're caught uh, operating on this lane, then you will be fine to fine. And I'm, I'm definitely sure that we can move forward with that, um, um, you know, as far as we uh, move forward with uh, Director Ariola and just getting his uh, commitment and buy-in to, to that. And so I know he's open for, as we discussed in the previous round table, uh, that we will look towards um, prioritizing the bike lanes over the weekend. So 
we are still moving forward with that uh, change in the statute and, and seeing it in the books. Um, we are currently developing it. We just need to ensure that we make it uh, feasible and uh, realistic for DPW to be able to execute. So thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to give comment at this time? Uh, I, I would. Okay, this hi, Dean. Can you, uh, can you turn on your video, please? <laughs> so we know um, what you look like for the record. Okay, let me figure this Sorry. out. Sorry, we, we did send a letter uh, to the legislature asking if we could start having face-to-face -face, um, hearings, or um, at least that's what I told my team to do today. So hopefully we can teach well, other face-to-face, -face, but for now we have to do it virtually. And so uh, for the record, we would need to see your face. So if you could please turn on your video, that would really assist us. Okay. Is there anyone else that uh, would like to comment or provide? Oh, there's Dean. Okay. Oh, you're riding your bike. Okay, go ahead and unmute yourself. You're still on mute. Okay. You're still on mute. Mm. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, I had my I had myself muted and off because I was writing, but I was listening to the whole thing. My my only question is currently in in the statute is there in the statute is there any uh, like safe passage distance that some other uh, nations and counties and states have uh, like three foot six foot and it's illegal for motorists to pass within that distance. Um, I haven't seen any in our current statute uh, as specific as that for bike for bike riders for cyclists. Um, but, I'm, but, I'm sure other states do. Um, yeah. In, yeah. in other counties, yes, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that they would have something like that. Yes. And but currently, a cyclist has the right of way on Guam. Correct. Non non motorized vehicles have the current right of way. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So there's just nothing to enforce. And, and, and I know I, I try not to ride on the road because of uh, situations that have happened in the past where commercial trucks come within a foot of you at 40 miles an hour and almost suck you into the truck because they don't realize that the, the, air, the air that they're moving sucks you into the lane behind them. And so Eric's right. They, they don't even attempt to move. I, I've seen it with the lane is totally clear next to them. They just don't want to move and they just zoom within six inches, a foot of you. And it just scared me out of riding on the road. And I, I try not to ride on the road. I'm mostly in dirt paths and mountain biking. But if, if the things happen that GCF is trying to do and if these laws uh, come into play and there's some kind of enforcement, I would love to get back on the road, you know. And so anyway, I just wanted to ask uh, and, and put that on the record as, as far as an idea uh, for the existing statute to be amended uh, to, to have a, a, a safe passage uh, law, if you will. Okay, and then Dean, can you just state your, your uh, full name for the record, please? Dean James Mueller. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you. And we will look into that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to give comments? Okay. All right, so Director Ariola and uh, the cycling community and all stakeholders, I thank you for um, committing and uh, your time during these past couple of months uh, working with DPW. Um, I'd also like to thank the governor for directing you that you know to that this would be part of the priorities. And so uh, please thank her. Um, but uh, I, so I just want to see that uh, we can move forward with the appropriation in the Budget Act to start seeing something tangible and concrete um, by the start, as soon mm -hmm. as movement as start as next year, early as the beginning of the year next year. At least with striping, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. And then, um, so we're going to let DPW do their work. Uh, we will constantly be checking in on them and uh, we will continue with uh, advocating for appropriation. And um, we will also, I'll also meet, our office will meet with uh, Director Ariola once the infrastructure bill is uh, signed by the president. And then 
hopefully we we can see how um, that money will be spent and also to ensure the prioritization includes bike lanes. And then um, in the next couple of months, we will be finalizing the bill to, to present as a result of this roundtable hearing, uh, the roundtable hearings that we've had. Okay, are there any questions or concerns from anyone present today or perhaps someone messaging you? No? Okay. Yeah, yeah Senator, yes. real quick. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Eric's right, and, and I, 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 I didn't mention it, I should have, but it was a, a, an action item from the, the most recent um, uh, work session that we had, but I, I am bringing into the loop our Office of Highway Safety here at DPW. Okay. Uh, yeah. for, as a matter of fact, she, she's, she, well, she's watching as well. Okay. Uh, uh, with regard to uh, passing uh, cyclists who are on the road. So we'll be looping them Thank in, you. as well as the, the folks from GPD uh, that handle uh, highway and vehicle safety on uh, j just to make sure we're on the same page uh, in terms of how to, how to write the language, whether it be by rule or regulation or by statute, how to write the language so it's clear and, and, and concise on uh, basically how, how, how to, to pass bicycles and what's the safest way to pass bicycles uh, uh, because right now the statute is pretty, it's pretty vague. It just says shall pass to the left of mm -hmm. such bicycle at a safe yeah. distance until safely clear. I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, that, that's that, could be, you to, you, that, that could be interpreted uh, a, a million different ways. So we'll, we'll make it real, real clear to everybody. And, and again, with, with safety in mind. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank it you very much. Senator. Two or three car links. Um, right. Something like that. Most likely three because the, speed limit is 35 miles per hour. So um, so thank you very much everyone for being here. Um, uh, we will constantly be communicating with our stakeholders in the community. And thank you, Mr. Director and all the members uh, at DPW for their hard work. Thank and uh, also thank you to all the cyclists um, sharing their concern and speaking out about it. And you'll see that uh, next year sometime, you'll, you'll start seeing our roads being improved especially with the striping of our bicycle lanes. All right. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good Thank uh, Thanksgiving and uh, God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. Eric, later, man.